When a user connects to an Azure subscription, he will use his email and password. That identity was created in Azure Active Directory and the admin of that Active Directory have gave that user the right access role like contributor or reader on that Azure subscription. But now what about a machine? What about my build agent that wants to run this CD pipeline to deploy applications into my Azure subscription? And what about all the other applications that wants to get access to one of my Azure resources? For the machine, we don't want to give it an email and a password. Instead, we'll use here another Azure type of identity that is the service principle, SPN. Let's learn in this video how to use the service principle in Azure DevOps in order to get authenticated and authorized to access Azure services. From Azure DevOps, if I want to access one of the Azure resources, I need to connect and to authenticate to Azure. And the way to do that from my pipeline is that when I choose one of the tasks that needs authentication to Azure, let's say here, for example, if we choose Azure App Service deployment or deployment to a database or deployment to an Azure function or calling Azure Key Vault to get secrets, calling the uh, VMs to deploy uh, scripts and so on, all most of these tasks actually will require us to authenticate and to get authorization from the Azure API using a service principle or a managed identity. Let's take for an instance the Azure CLI. If I want to run the command line against my Azure subscription, from here first thing it will ask me for, my, uh, for uh, the subscription that I want to connect to. So by default here, if I choose this subscription, for example, I click authorize. Here it did created a connection for me. It created actually a service principle for me. That is the same thing that you can achieve by going to project settings, opening that in a new window. Then if I check here the list of connections by going to service connections, I would see here uh, one connection to my uh, GitHub repo and another one uh, is a connection to my Azure subscription. And because this connection is a service principle, so that service principle is created in my Azure Active Directory as an app registration. So if I go here to my Azure subscription and then go to my Active Directory and then go to app registrations, select all the applications, I should see one here that have the same name as my Azure DevOps project, Azure SPN demo, and then have that app ID, the same app ID created by Azure DevOps itself. The service principle now have access to my Azure subscription. If I go to my Azure subscription here, the one that I have used before, and then if I go to where I have access control for my subscription, then go to role assignments. I should see here now that service principle was assigned to my Azure subscription and it was given the role contributor. That is the one that was created by default by Azure DevOps. So this have now contributor for all my subscription for all the resources and all the resource groups inside my subscription. So this might be fine in some cases if you want to achieve exactly that, but in some other cases, we don't want this. We want to give access to only some specific resources or some specific resource groups. So for my subscription here, I have actually few resource groups and I want to say, for example, I want to give access to only the resource group SPN Demo 1 RG. This one have a few resources, a web app and uh, application insights. So let's see how to do that from within Azure DevOps. So I'll get back to Azure DevOps to the page where I can create a new service connection for my project. And here I'll go to create a new service connection. And from here, I go to select Azure Resource Manager to create a new connection to my Azure uh, Cloud subscription. And from here, I get few options that are interesting. So this one here, Service Principle, uh, automatic. This is actually the one that is that we have already used before from that Azure CLI task. And this means that Azure DevOps will create that connection for you automatically. All you need to do is just to authenticate to uh, your Azure subscription, select the subscription, then authenticate, and then Azure DevOps will create a default service principle that have uh, the um, contributor role and that have the scope is set to all of your Azure subscription. And after that, you can select one of the resource groups that you have in your uh, subscription and that will be bound to that resource group. But here I want to take control over the creation of the service principle. I want 
to create that myself in order to be able to specify for example what is going to be the um, time to leave for that service principle and they can assign it to whatever resource I want to. So what I'm going to do here is that I go to create a new uh, connection and specify again Azure Resource Manager next then but here I go to select service principle. And with service principle, note that here it tells you this is manual because the creation is going to be manual creation. So I'll go to next and then select the environment that is going to be my Azure cloud, public cloud. And then here I need some arguments or some parameters or some uh, input data that is going to be the subscription ID, subscription name, service principle ID. And then I need the service principle key or the secret for that service principle in addition to the tenant ID from where we can get all of this information. So we can get these from a service principle. So let's go now to create a service principle in Azure. So for that, we'll be using the command line. I'll, and I'll be, I'll be using Azure Cloud Shell in order to create that service principle for this demo. I'll go first here, split my screen so that you can see so I'll create the service principle and assign it the role and the scope for that service principle. So for that, I'll use the AZ command line with AZ ID for Active Directory, SP for service principle, and then I say create for airbag. That's the command to create the service principle. And then I specify some parameters like here, for example, the name, and I call this one Azure DevOps SPN. And then I specify the role right here with dash dash role. So I'll give it the role, let's say contributor. And after that, I specify the scope, dash dash scope. And here the scope to which will be applied this service principle. So I want that service principle to have access to only my resource group, not all my Azure subscription. So for that here, I, I want to give it access to this uh, SPN demo one resource group. So from within this resource group, I need to get, uh, to get its ID. And they can get that through the properties window right here, where I get here the resource ID for that uh, resource group. So I copy this value and and I'll use it right here. So that's going to be sub slash subscriptions, slash your subscription ID, resource groups, and the name of the resource group that you want to get access to. Now the SPN was created and here I get the credentials like the app ID, the display name, the name, password, and tenant ID. And it was actually uh, assigned to my resource group. So if I go to access control, from here, go to role assignments, I should see. Yeah, here it is that service principle was assigned to my resource group as a contributor for that resource group. And that was also created on my Azure Active Directory. So if I go back to app registrations, all applications, I should see here the new service principle that I have created right here. Now let's go to use this service principle from Azure DevOps. So I'll go back to the settings where I started creating a new service connection. And from here, I'll provide this information about my SPN. So first I need here the subscription ID, which is the value provided right here. Then I will need the subscription name and you can get that value from the Azure portal simply by going to your uh, subscriptions, list all your subscriptions and here you get the app name and from there also you can get the subscription ID. And then here we need to provide the, for the authentication the service principle ID which is the app ID. So I copy, I'll use this value from here. And then for the service principle key that is actually the password and the service principle After that, we need to provide here the tenant ID, and that is the tenant field from this JSON. Let's go now to verify these credentials and verification succeeded. Great. Now, all we need to do is just to uh, provide a connection name. So I say this is my SPN, Azure SPN connection, for example, verify and save. Once that's done, that will be added to my list of service connections. So now if I get back to my pipeline from here, go again to the Azure CLI 
I'll go just to refresh this page here. So I'll choose again the task for Azure CLI. And now if I check this list, I'll be able to see here Azure SPN connection is now listed in, under my service connections. So I select it and for this demo, I'll choose a script type of type shell. For example, the script is going to be inline script and all I want to do here is just a Z group list dash O table just to list the resource groups so that I can see what resource groups I have access to. And then I'll add this task to my pipeline. Let's go now to run this pipeline, save. Now that pipeline is running. So if I go here, open this link in a new tab, go to the keyword pipeline. And here my Azure CLI task was run successfully. If I open this task, from here, you could see already that it uses the AZ login with service principle. It did specify it actually the username that is the app ID from my service principle. And then it did provided this password, tenant, and allow no subscriptions. And here it did connect it to my Azure subscription with that service uh, principle that I have provided before. And then it did set the uh, connection to the current Azure subscription. And then when it did run actually the command AZ um, group list it did listed only one resource group that is the spn demo one that is uh, because i have already set my uh, service principle to connect only to this resource group so it could not see the other resource groups so from here you what you can do now is that we can also maybe deploy web applications to any web app that is inside that resource group because the contributor role will be inherited by all the services inside that uh, resource group. So this was how to use service principle in Azure DevOps. And this is not all actually, because there is a few other options to connect to your Azure subscription. If you go to create a new service connection, you should see here another option for using managed identity. Managed identity that is, let's say, the next generation of SPN. It's like service principle as a managed service because managed identity will, under the hood, it will create a service principle for you, and but you will not deal with that uh, secrets anymore. However, you can only use managed identity inside and in resources inside Azure. So, for example, if you want to run your pipeline from a virtual machine that is uh, that is an Azure virtual machine, you can use managed identity because that managed identity would be attached to your virtual machine, but you cannot use it with a virtual machine that is hosted on outside of Azure uh, data centers uh, in your on-premise infrastructure, for example, that won't work for you because you can, in that case, you cannot attach a managed identity. A managed identity can be only attached to Azure uh, resources and services.